Hi guys, over the past couple of weeks you may well have seen uh, content going up of the new Asus or ASUS P67 and H67 boards. Now, ASUS ran some technical seminars throughout the world. We went over to the UK one recently and there's an article on our website about that describing all the technologies on the boards and stuff like that. Um, the new boards, they come in three different categories. Uh, you've got the deluxe versions, mainstream and value. So the board that I'm going to be taking a look at today is the P8P67. Now that falls into the mainstream uh, category. So as well as uh, typical sort of things that you'd expect, USB 3, um, SATA 6G, um, we're going to see the new EFI uh, BIOS on this board. So you're going to be able to point and click with USB mouse inside the BIOS. Uh, it's going to have Bluetooth. So we've seen that on some of the Rampage Free Extremes, uh, the, the other boards as well in the ROG series. Um, you're going to be able to get in on your phone, overclock stuff. Um, we've also got TPU, EPU on here, which uh, ASUS have uh, been talking about recently. We've got an interview with Jack Cheng actually on our website, and he goes into those uh, details regarding that technology. Um, so yeah, a lot of features on this board. Um, at the moment, I can only do an unbox video and just show you on a quick tour of all the features because the performance related results will come later uh, in probably the first or second week of January because of the NDA so we'll go straight into an unbox and I'll show you a quick tour of all the features okay so taking a look at the box we've got quite a simple design going on but it's uh, quite effective uh, P67 in the lime green on the sides and the front just to highlight that so obviously this is the chipset for P67, so that incorporates LGA1155, which is second generation Intel i3, i5 and i7. We've got DigiVRM, Bluetooth Go, USB 3, EFI BIOS, uh, SATA 6G. And then just opening this up, straight away we've got the board in an anti-static bag take a look at that a bit closer later. Let's take these bits out. Okay, so to start with, we've got the input-output uh, panel there. Two lots of cables for the SATA. Um, there's two for the 6G, which are indicated with the white accents on. And we've got two for the 3G. There, there's ordinary black. Uh, quick connect. So that allows you to put in your uh, power cables uh, routed to your case, really easy. Uh, driver CD and sticker in there. Now we've got two separate guides. We have one for the DigiVRM and the Bluetooth Go because that's fairly new technology. We've got the standard user guide that's going into the BIOS and various settings in there. And we've also got the addition of a bracket here. Now, on the deluxe version, you get USB 3 bracket. Now, this is looking to me like it is, yeah, it's USB 2, that. So, um, that gives you functionality on the front for USB 2 and eSATA there. So, we'll take a closer look at the board now. Okay, so I've got the board outside of the anti-static bag. Straight away you can see it's quite a feature packed board, lots of colour there, follows on from previous boards on the um, P55 chipset with being blue. Just taking a closer look at those heat sinks. Underneath those heat sinks we've got a 12 phase power design. And on the P55 chipset you will have seen the heat sinks were crystal shaped, but now we've got these waves uh, shaped design for the heat sinks and just over the other side there we've got 8 pin power for EATX as with the 1156 chipset we had DDR3 and that was in dual channel with the 1155 it's the same situation we've got the four lanes DDR3 dual channel and a maximum there of 32 gig. So we've got the support for right from 1066 megahertz 
right through to 2400 OC. Got the 24 pin power. Right beside that we have USB 3 header. So with the deluxe version of this board, the P8P67, we get bundled a USB 3 bracket for the front of the case and that plugs directly into this socket here. So I'm not sure what the situation is. didn't get it with this board, the non-deluxe, but I presume you will be able to buy it at some point. With regards to storage, we've got the um, these pale blue ones, uh, there's four of them, are 3G and along further along we've got white which are 6G and the, another two 6G in the blue colour so in total there we have eight SATA ports and plenty of options if you've uh, got 3G and 6G devices and the USB functionality we've got here as I already said uh, this header here provides two USB 3 ports up front and on the back panel we've got another two ports which are USB 3, the two blue ones there and then we've got up to 12 ports for USB 2 six from these three headers here and we've got another six on the back panel so those black ones there two there, another two and another two next to each other so for this USB 3 functionality we've got an NEC chip here which provides support for the USB 3 header and then we have another NEC chip there just towards the back panel now that's, that provides functionality for those two there For fan headers, we've got a four pin socket there, just by the heat sinks. Got the normal CPU, that's a four pin there. Three pin for PWR fan, just in the top right corner. And then towards the bottom, we have another three pin. So, plenty of options there for case fans. With the P8P67 board we've got support for Crossfire, so these two PCI Express slots here. The top one operates at 16 times, while the bottom one at 4 because the bandwidth is shared with these two ports here. So additionally to that we've got also uh, three PCI legacy sockets. Uh, I don't reckon many people use them, but you can get support there for older devices. There with the input output panel we've got plenty of features and we'll take a closer look at each individual element. First of all we've got the PS2 functionality for keyboard and mouse. We've got the SPDIF for digital audio and on this stack of USB 2 we've got this strange looking blue LED. Now this is the Bluetooth Go, which I described in the intro. Um, so we've seen on previous ROG boards Bluetooth functionality where you can get in via your phone and overclock, tweak things. And now with the mainstream boards we're going to be able to get this functionality too, which is great. So the main three main features of this Bluetooth Go are, uh, first of all, file sharing. You can synchronise your phone to your PC. The second is remote control, you can overclock from your phone, you can control things like media player and the third is you can access personal data, contacts and uh, calendars and things like that. The only difference is with the iROG that you get on the ROG boards, it operates from an individual chip, an independent chip, whereas this on the uh, P8, P67 it operates, uh, it uses CPU resources so it can affect performance only slightly. And then moving further along we've got two USB 
two ports, another two next to it. We've got the Gigabit LAN, which is supported by uh, Realtek 8111E. Below that, we've got the USB 3 in the blue, as we've already seen. And then we've got the audio sockets there. That's 8 channel, and that's provided by ALC 892 from Realtek. And that gives support for DTS around Sensation Ultra PC. Sounds quite glamorous. <laughs> now you may have heard of EPU and TPU. ASUS have brought these two together with the Dual Intelligent Processor 2. So in simple terms, what this allows you to do is automatically tune your PC, um, tune your CPU, your RAM and voltage all at the same time and it also stress tests things for you. So uh, that ensures that you get a good overclock and it doesn't need to be done by any expert, you can just simply uh, use the Windows application or there's a little switch here on the board you can see the TPU and you just need to flick that and it's the same situation really with EPU EPU though focuses on power management and efficiency so it'll tweak your voltages and regulate them independently and it also reduces the fan speeds when it's idle, the system. So you're going to get a quieter solution overall. And you can do that via Windows application. Or you can just flick this switch here, similar to the TPU. You just need to flick that left. Now as I've been around the various elements on this board, you'll have noticed a rather large heatsink at the bottom. This is for the Southbridge chip. You can see there it's quite a large heatsink and it's aluminium just like the other heat sinks it's pretty big, it's bigger than the other heat sinks that you'll have found on previous ASUS boards now in this region on the deluxe board there's another heat sink and Overclock 3D in their video said that this is for the North Bridge but both of these boards, both the mainstream and the deluxe version they don't feature a North Bridge chip at all and that's it really, that concludes our sneak preview of the P8P67 from Zeus. As I've said already, we can't publish any performance related results just yet. You'll have to wait till, uh, well, it's looking at the moment to be the first or second week in January. That may well change though. So you'll have to wait, hang fire till then, and we should have some interesting stuff to, uh, to publish there. These new boards looking like uh, they'll be good performers. We've seen some great features that we, uh, you know, we've seen previous on ROG boards, and they've come to the mainstream market now. So uh, it should be quite exciting. Thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to comment, leave your opinions and your feedback, but also uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We'd always like to hear what you think, and uh, keep supporting us.